This is the second video in a series on common lisp. If you haven't seen the first, you may want to look at it in order to have a lisp interpreter installed on your PC. Today we will explore more in detail the syntax of lisp. Let's open a lisp interpreter. On Windows just run svc l in the terminal. On Linux you may want to run it inside rl wrap. In Lisp, everything is an expression, or better, a symbolic expression. So, learning to write a Lisp program is a two-step process. You have to understand how to write expression and how they get evaluated. Every time we type something, the Lisp interpreter first reads it, then creates a Lisp object that represents what we have written, it evaluates the object, then it chooses an output representation and finally it prints it on the screen. This is known as REPL, read, eval, print, loop. As you may imagine, in Lisp we have numbers and uh, for example 1, 2, 3 and they get evaluated to their value. We have integer and floats. Then there are the strings. Again, they get evaluated to themselves. Symbols have to be bound to some values. For example, pi get evaluated to 3.14 and so on. Now let's discuss a more interesting object, the list. A list starts with a parenthesis, then there are some expressions separated by a space, and then there is another parenthesis. When they are evaluated, they are basically function. The first element is the name of the function, while the others are the parameters. At first, this may seem strange. In other languages, we have operators like plus that are in the middle of the arguments. And we have function whose name is written before the parentheses. Lisp doesn't make exceptions. Treat all of them the same way. Despite looking strange at the beginning, this is one of the features that gives Lisp its power. There is no difference between the built-in functions and what the programmer comes up with. With your current knowledge, you could use the Lisp interpreter as a powerful calculator. To get used to the syntax, let's try to write one solution of the equation x squared plus 6x plus 8. First of all, we have the ratio of two elements. In the numerator we have the sum of minus 6. In this case there is no space between 6 and minus so this is treated as a negative number. Plus the square root of the difference between two products. In the first one we have 6 squared and then we have the product of 4, 1 and 8. In the denominator we have the product of 2 and 1. And we can see that this is the solution of the equation that we started with. We can verify this. In fact, the, in the equation we have the sum of three elements. The first one is minus 2 squared. Then we have the product of 6 and minus 2. And finally, 8. 
and the value is zero. Lists can also be used as data object. We have to make it prevent evaluation. For this goal, we have to quote it using the single quote mark. Let's make an example. We have already seen what happens if we write plus one and two. This is the sum of two numbers, one and two. But if we put a single quote mark in front of it, the result is the list itself. Lists are not the only object that can be quoted. We can also quote symbols. For example, pi returns a value. Why, if we write quote mark pi, this return the symbol pi. That's it for today. The next time we will write our own list program and we will see why the object we have defined today are useful.